welcome to World Mobile. Joining me today, I have a Mr. John O'Connor, Director of African Operations at IOHK. We're going to be covering the progress and also a little bit more insights into John himself. John, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? Doing very well, Jessica. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Delighted to be here. Great to have you. And it would be great to start by giving the, the World Mobile community just a little bit of insight into where in the world you are today. Yeah, so we're shooting today from my garden in Addis Ababa, the capital of Ethiopia. Uh, so this is home for me and also the head of operations on the African side for the input output and Cardano efforts. Fantastic. And you've got some of the World Mobile team with you there. So we're going to get a little bit more into some of the work that you're doing. But first, I would love for you just to give some insights into the World Mobile community on, on yourself and some of the great work that you're doing. Because you initially started out with the Cardano Foundation. How did you first get involved with the Cardano Foundation? Yeah, so I've been working, uh, working on Cardano now for five years. Uh, I was one of the original crew uh, before we before we raised for Cardano, before we, we'd written any code. Um, and yeah, I, I was living in London at the time, working in technology, and heard about this opportunity of uh, you know, a new cryptocurrency. And at the time, actually, you know, it was early on in the industry, and I, I'd been reading about blockchain for a while. And in my head, you know, I was starting to think, do we really need another cryptocurrency? You know, does it make sense? There's so many. Um, and then I watched a video by Charles actually doing a, our CEO, Charles Hoskins, doing a TEDx talk in Bermuda, where he talked about the value that blockchain can bring in terms of digital identity, faster payments, and how you can add all of these things together. And actually what you have is a recipe for financial inclusion. And uh, it just made a lot of sense for me. So uh, after that, I've been all in and working exclusively uh, on Cardano for the last five years. So that was your eureka moment and since then you've been heavily involved since and it's been great to have you as part of the, the community as well. And your role has evolved quite a bit, I think it's fair to say. So your role is now IOHK's African Operations Director. How did this role evolve and how did you get to where you are today, also geographically? Yeah, so as I say, given that you know my interest was essentially always on the financial inclusion part, whilst I started at the Cardano Foundation, heading up the strategy there, you know, after I'd done an, that initial piece of work around you know, getting us listed on exchanges, uh, doing the upfront stuff that you need to do to launch, um, I realized that what I wanted to do was to work a bit more on my passion, which was on the financial inclusion portion. So I, I pitched Charles at a community event that we should set up a, an African focused entity to really work on driving adoption and to sort of, as we say, bridging the gap between uh, you know, technologists and academics who were all doing this incredibly valuable blockchain research, but also the real requirements and business cases from the people who, you know, we profess to want to build products for. So for me, that meant moving over to Ethiopia, um, setting up operations here and making sure that we really understand deeply the problems that we're trying to solve. And it's really interesting that you've studied finance in, uh, in London and then anywhere else in the world really was your oyster and you've ended up in sub-Saharan African economies as that being your main focus. So you must have seen a huge potential here for a lot of work to be done, a lot of opportunities as well. How did you really see blockchain coming into play with this and, and an engaging and enhancing business in such a large region? Essentially, the problems that we're trying to solve, you know, they break down towards the fact that uh, there's a lack of identity and there's a lack of good finance options, um, if I'm going to be really simple about it. So, you know, from the perspective of a blockchain technology provider, what we're trying to come in and do is to, to build this infrastructure, this financial infrastructure, much cheaper, much more economically um, than what traditional finance offers. And to put it very simply, it doesn't make sense for a bank to be banking a, a smallholder farmer in Ethiopia. There's not enough money in it. You don't want to set up a branch there, put in the property, have all of the staff, when the revenues that you're going to be generating from this user are, are too small. As a result, they have no financial, um, no financial inclusion. So what we do is we just build out a set of technologies that can provide this faster, cheaper, and more efficiently to the point where it becomes economical to bank these, uh, bank these, these populations through digital wallets, through smart contracts, and through faster payment rails. So that's really what it's about for us, is sort of flipping the model on who you should or shouldn't bank by changing the economics. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. And I read a statistic earlier today which said that for around every one bank account, there's around five mobile phones in the world, which is an extraordinary statistic as well and does kind of come into line with, with our talking point next, which comes to your introduction to World Mobile. So how did you come into communications with the World Mobile team? So this was probably two and a half years ago. So I believe, you know, Mickey Watkins, the World Mobile CEO, uh, was in London and heard that there was a Cardano meetup up in Edinburgh. So uh, Mickey, uh, Mickey got on the train, went and, you know, very quickly pitched Charles about the idea. Uh, Charles, uh, you know, sent over an email to me about it. And actually, since then, we've been talking with the World Mobile team, evolving the idea. I flew over to Tanzania to visit them um, shortly after that first introduction two years ago. And since then, through all the plotting and scheming, I think we've come up with a, a really interesting model of how you can build a sustainable telecoms business um, that also gives back to the people that are going to be operating it and, and using it. So that's really what we've done here. We've taken the latest innovations from blockchain and from decentralized finance, and we found a real world sustainable model to implement them within technology and within Tanzania. Awesome. So it started with a, a strongly convincing pitch uh, from Mickey there and has led to something extraordinary with two years of hard work, it seems. And I'd love to ask you kind of what makes, in your opinion, World Mobile really stand out from other blockchain projects out there that are also looking to, to bridge this connectivity gap? Well, first of all, I'd say there's really not that many projects which are looking to bridge the connectivity gap. You know, from our perspective, if we want to bank the unbanked, then we got to connect the unconnected. And very few people have really tried to engage with that core fundamental problem. Uh, and I believe that World Mobile is, you know, stand out in its class for, for engaging with that and creating a very interesting sustainable model to be able to continue to roll out infrastructure to new territories without having to do the huge CapEx investment that traditional telco operators do. So for me, it's that, um, you know, we designed a lot of these concepts around you know, the sharing economy uh, hand in hand with World Mobile. So for me, the real magic about this project is that it's the first implementation of all of the things that we've been talking about with regards to you know, uh, financial inclusion in a real use case. And you know, it's happening this year. So not five years, not 10 years. You know, this is real stuff that people will be able to see and touch uh, in the imminent future. Fantastic. And something that really resonated with me when I spoke with World Mobile and when I learned more from Mickey and the rest of the team is uh, for years and years at conferences, and I'm, I'm sure you must be familiar with the phrase banking the unbanked. And it was a phrase that in the blockchain and crypto community, you do hear quite frequently. And taking a step back was connecting the unconnected. And it just seemed so obvious as soon as Mickey had highlighted just how many people in the world do live without internet connection and, and what significant effect and ripple effect that could have on, on regions, continents and economies. Uh, so I'd love to ask you then, based on where you are, what kind of significant effect this will have on Africa? You've mentioned it's happening this year. What can we expect from this? For, you know, to give you the example of Ethiopia, so uh, the state monopoly internet provider here, Ethio Telecom, uh, for years and years and years, they were overcharging people for data. When I moved to Ethiopia, I was buying top-up scratch cards all day, every day, to be able to keep up with video calls with the I.O. team. So over the course of the last year, in expectation of Vodacom moving in, they've dramatically cut prices. And you can see it everywhere, right? People on low incomes who could previously not afford to stream YouTube, to um, engage in online banking services, like none of these things existed because the cost of data was too high. So overnight, what you've seen is a dramatic shift. Technology businesses can finally be built because there's infrastructure for them to exist on. Um, you know, businesses can start, retail businesses can start thinking about e-commerce. Uh, people can start thinking about, you know, exporting because they've got more information about what those markets look like. It's a game changer. It's completely transformative. And um, I've seen it with something as simple as um, a price cut here. So when One Mobile comes in and does exactly the same economies all across Africa, you know, much faster speeds at half the price of your traditional telco operators, it's going to be transformative. How could it not? Amazing. And it seems like there, there is just such momentum. It's great to, to pick your brains there, John. Uh, so then I'd like to ask maybe if you've got any upcoming IOHK input output projects that you can share with the World Mobile community that we can put in our calendar and keep an eye out for. 
Yeah, probably not. <laughs> um, I always feel I get myself into trouble sometimes by, uh, by uh, you know, uh, releasing a little bit early. But what I will say is, you know, off the back of the project we've, we're doing in Ethiopia, where we're implementing digital identity for 5 million students, uh, we've seen a lot of interest across Africa from top level stakeholders to be able to implement the same digital identity solutions um, across government credentials, government documents. And for us, the real opportunity there is that we can come in with a coalition, including World Mobile. Um, you know, these two products are synergistic. So that's, that's what we want to do. So, you know, keep your eyes peeled, but uh, nothing I can, uh, I can say just yet. Watch this space, exactly. Well, thank you so much for, for joining us, giving a little bit of insight, and it's fantastic to see the work that you're doing with the World Mobile team. On behalf of Cardano and IOHK, it was a pleasure to learn a little bit more about your background as well. And I'm sure we'll be catching up again very soon. So enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jessica. See you in Zanzibar, I'm sure. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, that's all from us here. We'd love to hear how you found this video. Share your thoughts in the comment and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to watch any more updates like this.